Okay, guys, uh, welcome to our, I think it's our ninth webinar, um, Introduction to DCC Operation and CB Programming. Um, now, what we're going to be talking about primarily here is using your DCC system to access and operate your Tsunami 2 decoders. Getting that, we wanted to get familiar with your DCC systems. Um, the biggest thing is your, the DCC system is your gatekeeper. It's kind of your way of controlling the decoder. And we've got a lot of really cool features that we've built into the decoder. But if you're afraid to use your DCC system or if you're not sure what buttons to push, then you find yourself being very limited and you're not being able to take advantage of all the cool things that we've built in there. Now, we've taken a lot of time to make these decoders operate more realistically and to give you more more realistic control of the decoder and of your locomotive and your train. But if you find yourself limiting yourself because you don't know how to access, say, function 20 or whatever the case is, then you're going to be limiting. So we want to help open that up, show you how to use three of the major systems and give you some confidence to move forward. So we're going to review here a little bit. And these are some of the things that we've talked about in prior webinars. And there's some information on our YouTube channel. So we're going to spend a couple of minutes here uh, reviewing. Uh, first of all, NMRA DCC is a standard, and the standard is the signal that is actually on the rails. And this follows a, a protocol that every DCC system has to create, whether it's an MRC system, Digitrax, NCE, uh, CVPs, Easy DCC, or even some of the Bachman stuff. As long as it's following the NMRA DCC signal, the signal on the rail is standardized. So things like um, there's other brands out there, uh, DCS, which is uh, Digital Command System or something like that, RCS, some of those others. They're similar, but they're not DCC. And so when you hook your decoder or put your decoder on the track, that is actually not going to work with their command station. So the idea behind DCC was it's universal and you can use your decoders with other brands of systems or you can use a system with different brands of decoders. However, that way at least everybody's stuff more or less works together and you don't really lose your investment. So if one company, say a decoder company, were to go out of business or disappear, you're not out having to start all over again. So the DCC command is actually four segments long and it's fairly standard. Um, and the four parts are, first of all, you look at this illustration there and you see the preamble. And the preamble basically is, I always word it to kind of illustrate what's going on. It's, hey, everybody, listen up. It tells the decoders that a command is about to come and all the decoders start listening. The next part is the address and it tells the decoder which address they're trying to communicate to. And so when you get the address, the decoders that are not set to that address then go back to sleep or continue doing what they were doing. Meanwhile, the address that you're intending the command to continues listening. The third part is the information, and this is what tells the decoder what to do. So, hey, everybody, listen up. Locomotive 1000, move forward, speed step 10, turn on F0, turn on F4. The last part is the error detection, or it's basically an end of transmission. It tells the decoder, this is the end of the command sequence. Once the decoder has received all four parts of that command, it then performs the task. And then the next DCC command is, hey, everybody listen up and moves on to the next address or the next DCC signal change. And the DCC system will continue to repeat this. This is important to know because we're gonna be talking about programming and, and doing some CV adjustments on the main line. And so when we look at the uh, DCC signal, again, it's, hey, everybody listen up, locomotive 1000, set CV 128 to a value of 100, end of transmission. The decoder, having received all of that, performs the task. And we'll talk about the differences here as we go through. So the next thing we want to talk about is what is programming. And this is one of the biggest misnomers in DCC. Um, you're not actually programming the decoder. You're actually making adjustments based on what our engineers have programmed software into the decoder. So when you're changing the volume, just like you do on your television set, you're just changing the volume. And so you're making adjustments to the decoder's behavior. This allows you to modify sound effects such as we talked about with volume, or you can even go through and add uh, details to your locomotive digitally by selecting, for example, the type of air horn that's being played on a particular locomotive. This gives you the ability to make those adjustments. 
Now, when we make those adjustments, we're doing it using CVs or configuration variables. Now, these are ways that you can make adjustments. They vary the configuration of the decoder. So they adjust the setup of your decoder. So this is how you can adjust things like volumes and things like that. There are some that are industry standard. For example, the address CVs are typically fairly standard throughout all the brands. So their short address is stored in CV1, long address is stored in CV17 and 18. There are other CVs that are manu manufacturer specific. So for example, Soundtracks, we were the first ones with sound decoders available in model railroading. So with that, there was nobody else that had volume controls in any of them because they were all motor decoders. And so we had to come up with a manufacturer specific CV that allowed us to adjust the volume of the whistle or the horn or even the master volume. And so with our Tsunami and the Tsunami 2 and Economy products, we use CV128 as the master, 129 as the whistle, 130 as the bell, and so on. So there's going to be some variances. And when other brands started coming in and competing with sound decoders, they had to do different CV numbers because they didn't want to look exactly like they were copying everything we did. Now, when we look at a CV, every CV has this same structure. And I know you guys have seen this in our manuals. We've talked about it before in these webinars. But every CV has eight bits, and each bit is assigned a value. The bit is either on or off, and this is where the digital comes in. Digital means one or zero. And the sequence of ones and zeros dictates what's happening. It tells the decoder what to do. In this case, we're ones and zeros using to set up the configuration variables. So each bit is worth a value. That value doubles as you work your way across. So 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. Any number between 0 and 255 is a unique combination of those values. And so that way the decoder can know what it's supposed to do. And this is where you can do things like, for example, on our steam decoder, we've talked about how to select the type of fuel. Well, you use a combination of these bits. You can enable an articulated chuff by enabling one of the bits. You can enable a uh, lifting injector versus a non-lifting injector by, again, enabling the bits. Now, even... In this case, you would go through, figure out what the sounds are, and then give a final value. But even in the case of a volume control, the CV is structured the same, but 0 to 255 equals 0 to 100% volume. And so we're going to be playing a little bit with that today, but it still uses the same structure. Now, when we're doing programming modes, and we're going to be doing that a lot today. So there's two main programming methods. You have ops mode or mainline programming, and that's programming on your mainline track. So as we discussed just a minute ago when I was talking about the DCC command, every command on the programming track is prefaced with an address. It's telling that particular decoder to now program and or adjust the CV value. It's on the fly, so you can hear instant changes, and we're going to do that here today. So when I make a volume adjustment, you're going to instantly hear the volume change. This way, you can set up the locomotive profile right there while it's operating, while it's running, and you can rest assured knowing that you're talking only to that decoder. Now, the biggest thing is you do have to know the decoder's address. So for example, here on my table, I've got Locomotive 589, and this is the one we're gonna be using for our presentation today. But if I send the commands to address 1000, no matter how much I want that decoder to take that command, it is not gonna take it because this one is set to 589 and my commands are being sent to address 1000. So you absolutely have to know the address. So if you have no control of a decoder, you can't blow the whistle, ring the bell, or anything like that, the address is either corrupted or it's not the one you think it is, that's when we have to find another way to program it. The other thing really quickly is you cannot read a CV value on the, pro, on the main line. And the reason for that is because the way a decoder is read is not the way you expect it to. The DCC system doesn't say, hey, decoder, what's the value in CV29? And the decoder says six. What it actually does is it plays a game of 256 questions. And it says, is the value of CV29 zero? Is the value 255? Is it one, two, three, four, five, six? When the decoder answers no, nothing happens. When the decoder answers yes, it internally draws a surge of current. The DCC system can detect that surge of current and say, yes, I have an answer. Well, if you're on the main line and somebody's on the other side of the layout just starting a locomotive, the DCC system has no way to determine where that surge of current came from. So you're going to get false reads. So in order to read the decoder, we need to put it on the programming track. And that's our next method of programming. 
and this is known as service mode or programming track. Um, and this takes a small isolated programming track, essentially a controlled environment. And this is where we can read and write CVs. Now, using the programming track, usually the uh, power on your programming track is set to about half power. So things like the original Tsunami needed a booster, um, but the Tsunami 2 and Ekonomi do not uh, need a booster. Now, the other thing is the power to the track and the, proto the signal is slightly different. And so the decoder knows not to make any noise. It's basically on a programming track. So when you put it on there and you turn the power on your programming track, the decoder is going to sit there. You may hear a click, but that's the decoder power powering up and knowing, OK, I'm on the programming track. So the protocol is a little different. So instead of prefacing a command with an address, this just says, hey, listen up set CV 29 to six or whatever the command is. So in this case, there's no address needed. Now the advantage is if you have lost the address, forgot the address, or it's corrupted for whatever reason, you can put it on your programming track and actually reassign or set the new address. Now in this case, you can read because when the decoder is surge, you know, draws that surge in current, you're on an isolated track and the DCC system can see that it's just this small track that's right in front of us. And so therefore it can detect that surge in current. So looking at our function mapping chart here, this is just an overview, a list of what we have for function mapping. Now we can go through here and go in detail, but what we're gonna do today is we're gonna use the F0 and the F2 for the headlight and the air horn. We're gonna use the F15 for the handbrake and the F23 for the all aboard. We're gonna use these functions here to operate the different DCC systems. So well, let's go ahead and get started. So first we're gonna start off with the MRC system. And now this is a Prodigy Advanced Squared Elite system that I have here in front of me. So we turn it on, track power fires up. So again, simply looking at the MRC system, what we wanna do is we want to select our locomotive so we're going to push the locomotive button up here in the corner and then now it's going to ask us to enter our loco number so now we're using locomotive 589 so we're going to type 589 my dcc system here locomotive 589 i hit enter and now i have control of locomotive 589 so i can blow the horn ring the bell and turn on my headlight I can start to move the locomotive forward and I can stop it and I can use the thumb wheel also to move the locomotive back and forth. Now one of the things we've accessed F2, F3, F4 but you notice that we only have 10 keys here 0 through 9 and so how do we access the higher functions? Now when we're grabbing our throttle here to access the higher functions on the MRC system we're actually going to press the shift key and then the two digits that correspond with the function that we want to enable. So with the MRC system here, we're going to go ahead and activate function 15, for example. So I'm going to use the shift key, which is down here in the lower corner. And when I press that, you're going to see the SF, I'm sorry, yeah, SFT that's right here. And that's telling me that the next two buttons are going to control the higher functions. So when I want to access function 15, for example, I type in 1, 5, and now you hear Fireman Ed tightening the handbrake. It's now same thing, and you notice the shift disappeared. Now the next thing is if I want to access function 23, I can do the same thing. So I can do the shift 23, and we hear our friendly conductor holler all aboard. So now you can go through and, and do this with any of the functions 0 through 28. So when you're accessing the ditch lights or some of the other lights, you can do that um, with, this, with the MRC system. Now when we get into programming and we're setting up a decoder, this is where we push the program button. Now the first press of the program button puts us into program, use the programming track. And then we can press the enter key and cycle through the menus until we see CV number. And then we can program the CV number that we want. First, I'm gonna use mainline programming. And so to do that, we hit the program button twice. And we can then go in and set the CV. So 
let's go ahead and do that and we're going to do the same thing so we're going to use the program button right here and you're going to see program use program track we're going to hit it a second time and it's going to say program main track now i'm going to press the enter key and first is asking for address and then there's some other ones there and we'll get through and now it's asking for CV number so this is where I can simply type in CV 128 which is my master volume I'm gonna press enter now it's asking me for a value so we're gonna reduce the value so I'm gonna cut it down we're gonna set this to a value of 50 so I type in 50 I press the enter key and you instantly hear the change in volume now again, this is mainline programming, so the command was basically, hey everybody listen up, locomotive 589, set CV128 to a value of 50, end of transmission. The decoder, having received all of that, performs the task. Now I'm going to move these clips over here, and we're going to do the programming track. So I'm going to exit out. So now when I use my throttle, I'm going to push the program button once and it says program, use programming track and we're going to hit enter. Now again, we can set the address and you didn't hear my locomotive power up because it's on the programming track. So we can press the enter a few times here, cycle through the menu and get to my CV number. Now if I wanted to override and set CV 128 back to 100, which is where I had it when we started this, I just simply type in CV128, enter, and I'm going to set a value of 100. And then I press enter. Now that decoder has been programmed. So now I can exit out, hit the enter key, and I go back to normal operations. Now to prove this is taken, we're going to go ahead and read the CV value on our programming track. So to do that, we actually push the program button three times. So we're gonna do program on the programming track, program on the main, and then it says read program track. So now I'm gonna hit the enter key. Now the first thing there, it's asking for the address. Now when you're reading on this MRC system, I can press the enter key and read, or to toggle through the menu, I push the shift key. So just for curiosity, let's see if we can read the address. So we're gonna press the enter key, and it's trying to read the address. And you see the read button flashing. And this comes up with 589, which is my decoder's address. So now I hit the shift key and I cycle through the menu till I get to CV number. Now I can read CV 128. And I'm going to press enter. And it's going to read it. And now it's going to come back at a value of 100. So now I exit out. I can hit the uh, shift key and I can hit the enter button to exit out. Now I'm back to normal operation. So now I'm going to move my wires back to the power for the main line. And when the locomotive fires up, you're actually going to hear the locomotive at the value of 100, which is what we started at. So again, we have full control of this decoder. We can do this no matter what system we're using. So with the MRC system, like I said, we can access all of the higher functions just by pushing that shift button and going through. So again, go through, play with it, try it out because we've got a lot of functions built into the decoder. So you can do this with any system. So now we're gonna go ahead and shut this one off. And we're gonna go ahead and use this Digitrack system that I've got here in front of me. We're gonna do essentially the same thing. Now when I grab this Digitrack system, first off I'm using a DCS100 and a DT402 series throttle. Now this, a lot of this is going to use with a lot of the higher throttles, the Excel, you know, the 400 series and the 500 series. Um, one of the things I know a lot of guys have are these operator throttles, which are these very limited features. And the problem with a lot of those is you also limit your function accessibility. You may only have eight function or 10 functions or something like that that are accessible with that particular throttle. And so this is why I always encourage you to get the better throttles or use other methods because you can access all of the functions without having to go through and remap or limit yourself on what you can do.
So first off, when we have our Digitrack system, we've got it powered up. The first thing we have to do is turn on track power. So to do that, we have the power button down here in the lower corner. We're going to push power. And then up here, we're going to push this plus. And now my decoder starts up because now we've turned on track power. So now I can find the exit key and I get out. Now I'm back to normal operation. Now one of the other things about this is you actually have two knobs up here and this is actually two separate independent throttles. So you can actually control two different trains or two different locomotives with the throttles. So to make sure we're using the correct one, you can move the knob a little bit and very closely here on your screen you're going to notice that there's flashing smoke over a locomotive signal. And that's indicating that this is the active throttle. So when I'm doing that, now I'm going to select my locomotive, which is 589. So in this case here, I'm going to push the loco button. And now it's asking me, enter my loco number. So I'm going to type in 589. And then I'm going to press the enter key, which is over here. So now I have control of my decoder. I can move it forward and there's the direction button for the left knob and I can control my decoder, move it back and forth and I can press my function buttons to turn on various features. Now in this particular one we're going to access the higher functions. Now to do that we're going to press the FUNC key and then the one at the same time. So usually what I do is depress the FUNC key, F-U-N-C, and then the one. And in your display, you're going to see the essentially acronym for extended functions plus 10. And what that's telling you is that the zero key is now function 10. The one key is now function 11, 12, 13, and so on, all the way up to function 19. So to do that, we simply push the FUNC press the one key, watch for that in there, and then we press uh, our corresponding. So again, we're gonna activate the handbrake. So we're gonna press the function and the one key, and now you can see extended function plus 10. So when I press the five, you're gonna hear Fireman Fred tightening down the handbrake. Now the other thing you'll notice is that this hasn't disappeared in my screen. So it still says extended function plus 10. So I can access more than one of those at this time. So if I wanted to take on fuel, which is function 17, uh, fireman ed general servicing and function 18 and so on, I would just push the seven or the eight key at this point. Now to go back to normal function control, you hit the exit button and now your screen goes back to normal. The extended function disappears. So now when I press the two, I'm back in control of my diesel air horn. Now the same thing happens when we're doing functions 20 through 28 but in this case we push the function and then the 2 key and now on my screen you see extended function plus 20. Now to activate all aboard we're going to push the 3 key and now we've triggered all aboard. So if we wanted to do the extra lights, things like that, we can use 23, 24, all those different functions all at the same time. And then again, to go back into normal operation, we hit the exit key and we're back at normal control of our decoder. So now we're gonna program some, some values. And so in the Digitrack system, you're gonna start off with pushing the program button. And in the center, again, you want to make sure that you have the right address active if you're trying to talk to it or if you're talking on the programming track, it won't matter. In the center of your screen here, you're going to see these acronyms, PD, PG, PH, and PO. And that stands for Programming Direct, Programming Page Mode, Physical Register, or Program Using Ops Mode. So you cycle through those menu options by pushing the Program button multiple times until you get the correct one that you want. Now, when you're using mainline or ops mode programming, you're going to use PO. The other three methods are measuring on the programming track, but I typically use program direct. The other ones work as well, but some of the CV numbers may be limited, so check your user's guide for information. Now, when you're programming here, your left knob is your essentially becomes the dial for your CV number. So you can determine what CV number is by simply dialing the knob. 
The other side of this is then the right knob becomes your, your CV value. And when you press the enter, it will then send the programming command. Now the good news is you can program multiple CVs with turning the knobs and then press the exit to, well, exit. So really quickly here, we'll show you programming on the main line. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna reduce our volume. So I'm gonna push the program button in my screen until I see PO in the window. And then you'll notice here that I have my locomotive address. So it's telling me I'm programming on the main, main line to address 589. So in this case, now I'm gonna take this knob and I'm gonna dial up CV 128 which is my master volume and then I'm going to take the right knob and I'm going to dial that up to a value of 50 so now on your screen you see CV 128 equals 50 so when I press the enter key now again you hear that volume instantly change now I can go through and change other volumes so if I want to change the whistle or the bell I can just simply dial this turn the knob the other way on the other side and program a handful of CVs that way. Now let's program on the programming track really quickly. So I'm going to move these wires over. We're going to dial up the programming track. So now I'm going to exit out. Now on my throttle here I'm going to push the program button until I see program direct. Now, we can read a CV before we start to program it. So in this case, I'm gonna dial back to CV128. And CV128 here, you notice, has question marks because we don't know what the value is. So I can either set the value by turning the knob or if I wanna read it on the programming track, I can simply press the Enter key and it's gonna go back in there and it's gonna read and now it comes up with a value of 50. Now let's say I wanna change that, so now, I want to change that up, so we'll change this to a value of 100 again. So now you see CV128 equals 100. I can just simply program the enter button, and now my volume control has been set. And again, we're not hearing any sound from the decoder because it is on the programming track. So now we exit out. Now we're back to normal operation. So let's put our wires back on our mainline operation. So now we go back, now we've got our locomotive fired up and you can hear that the volume is back up where it is and I've got full control of the decoder again. So anyway, but that's kind of how you use the Digitrack system. It kind of gives you again the flexibility to go through and adjust all of the CVs as you need fit and so you can go through and do any of that when you're programming with your decoder. So. Last thing here, we're going to move over here and we're going to use the NCE system. And now in my hand here, I actually have a power cab. And the power cab is essentially the same thing as the pro cab. And so the two cabs are virtually identical. Um, the difference is the power cab actually is the DCC system and the booster in the throttle. So it's sending the power to the track as well. So again, we have we select our loco, so we push the select loco button. You see that in your screen. You see 589. We hit the enter button, and we have full control of our decoder again. Now, a couple of things about the unique about NCE. So when we have three different ways of controlling the speed. So we have the individual speed step, the throttle knobs, and so forth. So we can either use the throttle knob to control the speed of our locomotive, or we can use the buttons. But this is, what's, this is one of the things that's important. When I'm trying to blow the horn, the F2, I use the horn and whistle button, and it becomes a momentary press. The F2 button down here is actually a latching button. So when I push the F2, the horn will blow until I go back and turn it off. So just one of the things to note now this will be unique to the power cab and the pro cab but again this is where the differences in dcc systems comes into play now on this one as we've done here we've accessed the horn we know how to do that we zero to key turns on the the lights but how do we access the higher functions well in this particular case we're going to use the shift and the zero key so we push and hold the shift we push the zero key 
and in our screen we're going to see F10 through F19. And just like the digit tracks now, the zero key is 10, the one key is the 11 key, the two key is 12, all the way up to 19. Now to access Fiat functions higher, we press and hold the shift and the zero key a second time and you'll get to F20 through F29. So the zero key is function 20, the one key is 21 and so forth. Now when you press the function, it actually will then exit out so you only have one press. So if you want to ac access, we're going to do function 15, we have to do that twice separately. So let's go ahead and do that really quickly. So on this here, we're going to take our throttle, we're going to push and hold the shift and then the zero key. And in the screen, you see F10 through F19. And that's telling me that now those are zero is 10, 11, 12, and so on. So we're gonna push the five so we can hear Fireman Ed uh, turn the uh, handbrake. So now you're gonna hear the handbrake and then my screen went back to the normal operation. So when I push the two or the one, I just have control of my horn and whistle. Now to access the all aboard, now we're gonna do this twice. So we're gonna do shift, zero, and then shift zero a second time. And you can see in the window, it says F20 through F28. Now when I press the three, you hear our friendly conductor holler all aboard. And it goes back. Now one of the other things you can do with the NCE Power Cab and the Pro Cab is this option button right here is what's known as a soft key. And it means you can reassign its purpose. On this particular one, I have actually accessed that so I can access the higher function. So to access function 23 again, for example, would be option, option three, and you'll hear our conductor yell all aboard. So again, you have the access to be able to change things up. Now one thing when you're using NCE is at the bottom there you have an EXPN button. And what that's doing is it's telling you expansion. And so when you push that button, you can see a list of all the functions and their current state. So you can see which functions are on and which functions are off. So when we push this on my throttle here, we can see that function 15 is on and function 23 is on. Now note, I can't turn on any functions or turn off any functions when we're in expansion mode. So this is just a quick reference. So we hit the expansion again to exit out. And now we have access to our functions again. So now we're going to program our CVs again. So now on this one, program escape is in the lower button, uh, the lower corner. So we're going to push the program escape button. And the first time it goes to program on mainline. So we're going to hit enter. And now it's first thing it's going to ask you is the locomotive number that you want to program. This gives you the ability to change it. So if you don't want to talk to 589, we can type in another address. But if we do want to talk to Loco 589, we can simply press the enter key. Now we're going to get to a screen where it says one equals ADR, and that stands for address. So yes, you can program the address on the main line. Two for CV, and three equals CFG. Well, we're going to change the volume here, again, like we've done in the past with these other systems. So we're going to, program, we're going to press the two key for CV. So now it's asking me to enter the CV number. Well, master volume, as we've done before, is CB128. So we put that in there, we verify, we hit the enter key. Now it's asking me to enter a value. So I can type in a value of 50, I hit the enter, and again, we instantly hear our volume change. Now to get out of it, we push the program escape. Now when we want to program using the programming track, now on the power cab, this is where it comes in. You have to be very careful because if you're using the programming track, it will actually use the same outputs as the main line. So as we talked about, the programming track does not need an address. So if you make any programming changes while that's connected and other locomotives are on your system, you can reprogram them. So this is where we recommend either a toggle switch or just be cautious to do it. Now one of the ways NCE has tried to help to make sure you don't do it accidentally is you actually have to push the program escape button four times to get to program use programming track. So it's not like you could accidentally press the button more than once and then reprogram the entire layout. 
Now when you're using the power cab and you use the programming track, it will actually shut down your mainline track power but has separate outputs on the system. So it will actually send power to the programming track but your main line will, set, will shut down. So again, it's not necessarily something that's going to make you very good many friends by doing this during an op session. Well anyway, once we've selected use programming track, we press the enter key. You notice my locomotive goes quiet now because now we're in programming track mode. So in this case, we see one equals standard. You're going to see some standard CVs such as CV29, CV34, etc., things like that. Two equals CV, again, this is how we can program our CVs directly. Uh, three equals reg, I've never used it, so I can't honestly say what it is. Probably register mode, something like that. Um, but anyway, we're going to push the two for CV. Now you're going to see enter CV number. Notice it didn't ask me for my address because, again, programming track commands are not address based. So I'm going to type in CV number 128 and I'm going to press the enter key and it's going to try to read it first and it's going to tell me where we're starting. So now it comes up CV 128 equals 50 like we just programmed on the main line. So now I'm going to type in a value of 100 and press enter and now this decoder has been programmed. Now it's asking me for the next CV number. So let's for argument's sake say I want to read CV 128 again to make sure that it took. So I type in CV 128 hit the enter button and it's going to read but now it's taking longer because remember is it one is it zero is it 255 is it one two three four five six seven so it takes longer to get to a value of 100 once it finally pulls up we see cv 128 equals 100 so now we've been able to program our decoder successfully using all three systems so this is where familiarity with your dcc system is going to really come into play because once you can do all of this, you open up the entire world of all of the cool features that we've built into the decoder. Now, once you get into the different systems, you're going to notice there's a lot of, there's some quirks and some oddities for each system. Now, are these over, you know, overbearing or going to break the bank or anything like that? No, they're just different ways that the DCC system operates. For example, Digitrax sends out a constant full DCC packet, including all functions, including 0 through 28. So what happens is if you have two throttles set to the same address, the decoder in this case is just dumb. It's doing what it's told. One throttle is telling it to turn on F3. The other may be telling it to turn off F3. So those commands are constantly cycling. So what happens is you get an incessant honking of the short whistle or short horn. This happens quite a bit, and people call up and say, what's wrong with the decoder? Well, nothing. It's just doing what it's told. Other case in point is the NCE system doesn't send out the full packet like the Digitrax does. It only sends out motor commands constantly and will send out function packets when a function state changes. And so what happens if you run over a dead spot and your decoder loses power, comes back on, well, the zero key when you turn it off and on to turn on the light, you may also hear a horn blast of the short horn. Well, if F3 is already in the on state, the decoder is simply matching its state. So it's just knowing how those systems work. Now, every system may have a little bit of a different ones. These are some of the more common ones that we get questions on all the time. So by understanding what's going on, you can go through and change that. Now, there are some settings in each of these DCC systems to help overcome that, but these are some of the common questions that we get. So with that, the last thing we're going to talk about here is a CV reset. You can set CV8 to a value of 8 and basically cycle the power. So when you set it, the decoder reboots, it will reset. Now with the Tsunami 2 and Economy with so many different CVs, we've got it to where you can set partial CVs. So if you set CV8 to a value of 9, you can reset only CVs 1 through 128. 10 through is uh, 129 through 256 and so on. So like say for example, if you've messed up the function mapping, let's say, and you don't, you just want to start over. You don't have to reset the entire decoder. You can reset just a partial. So you set CV8 to a value of 11, tip the locomotive over, set it back down on the track. Um, and once it restores, you'll see the lights flash. But because you set it to 11, you've only reset those function mapping bank of CVs. So that's everything I've got prepared for you. So guys, take, you know, take time, learn your DCC system, become a master with it, because once you know how to use the DCC system, you can really use the decoder the way, with all, the way you want to, with all of the features, all of the uh, uh, operational uh, characteristics, things like that, that we've built into the decoder. 
Um, give you confidence. Use that DCC system. It'll make your train running your trains a lot more fun. Um, worst case, if you really want to just be familiar with the system, take your locomotives off the track so that way you're not reprogramming anything or doing anything or have one that you can reprogram and reset. You can't break the decoder by changing CV values. We've tested that. We've verified it. You may get some strange behavior, but you didn't break it. You can always reset the decoder back to defaults.